What is up, audio aficionados? Mr. Audio Feedback here, and today I am back doing what I do best and reviewing another set of headphones. I have with me here an open ear concept of headphones, but not bone conduction. Bone conduction is dead, my friends. Welcome to the era of air conduction once again. If you're familiar with bone conduction headphones, not even a year ago, if you would have seen that a pair of headphones that look like bone conduction headphones, but were actually air conduction, you would have looked the other direction. You would have thought, what a piece of junk. I don't want them. Companies like Shox and Soundcore have been taking the open air concept and taking it to the next level with air conduction. They sound better and they feel better. However, there are some caveats and differences, so let's get into the video. So let's talk about the quality of this product here. I mean, they look just like bone conduction headphones that I've reviewed in the past. The difference is, when I put these on and make my funny face like I always do, they don't fit. They don't fit on your temple, right? Right here, they fit, ironically, over your ear. Well, at least your ear canal where it blocks your inner ear. So I don't get how these are open ear in general. I'm not saying all open ear headphones are like that, but these particular ones, they do block your inner ear. So I don't think you can really claim that they're open ear headphones. They are, however, air conduction. And let me tell you why. If you look right here into these little speakers of the headphones, there's actually a little grid here that has the speaker, right? So that's just like a normal headphone. There's really nothing special about these. The only difference is they're I guess, go behind your neck and look like bone conduction headphones? I don't know. But what's the appeal? I mean, maybe they sound better. Maybe, I mean, they're definitely going to sound better than bone conduction because the way bone conduction works is that the signal, the sound signal doesn't hit your eardrum or your tympanic membrane if you're a nerd. It uses these bones that are inside of your uh, temple here, and that kind of bypasses your inner ear. Cool tech. I got a video that explains it. Uh, you can just check out that video here if you're really that interested in it. I, I admit it's not the most exciting video, but if you're a curious person like I am, it's worth checking out. Wearing them is actually really comfortable. They're not bad. They are good. I could see why they're marketed towards runners and gym fanatics, uh, you know, outdoor enthusiasts, etc. because I don't buy into the fact that you'll hear your surroundings with these, but they use a nice food grade silicone material over the whole thing. It feels very comfortable. And that high quality of silicone is something you should definitely look for in headphones like this moving forward. Look for that food grade, it's highly worth it. Then on, underneath this is a nickel titanium blended alloy of memory metal. Watch, look at this. See what I'm doing here? Look goes exactly back to the way it was. What does that mean? There's no case for these, but you can sure as hell scrunch these up and throw them in your pocket or your purse or whatever you want, and they're gonna be fine when you take them back out. That's really nice. They fit well too. On the back of my neck, there's enough of a gap there, and I've got a big dome, so you don't have to worry about that. If your head's bigger than mine, I'm sorry. In general, there's a nice little gap here where they'll fit the biggest heads, but also, I don't think you'll have a problem if you have a smaller size head as well. You know, they're just very comfortable. These are the kind of headphones that you can wear for long periods of time. I'm talking hours, because there's no air fatigue with these. The only thing I would worry about though, is long term, if you're running, especially like marathon distance, which I'm sure is just like a fraction of those of you that are watching this, that there is a possibility of them shifting uh, around and rubbing against the back of your head maybe. I'm not a marathoner, I'm actually just a fat dude that takes his dog for a walk and uses an exercise bike and just mostly watches TVs and makes videos like this. So I can't give you an example of that, but it's something to look out for. Battery size, you're looking at a 140 milliamp hour battery, which will give you 14 hours of use according to Soundpeats. There's no fast charge option, which I did find odd. Most headphones nowadays have that. So don't expect these things if they're dead or dying to be able to plug them in for like 10, 15 minutes and get another hour or two. It's just not happening with these. It uses a USB-C port to charge, so it's not proprietary or anything like that. And it does come with a, a dust cover on the port. And it takes about an hour and a half to fully charge these things when they're completely dead. There's no active noise cancellation with these, so you don't have to worry about that draining your battery even further. They're marketed for runners. They're rated an IPX4, which is rather low on the low side of the waterproof rating or water resistance rating. And that four means that it's like, it can withstand a sprinkle of water. Let, let's put it this way. You won't be doing any of this, 
but if you give your dog a bath, you might get away with this. Trust me, I just did it. My dog stank. She smells good now though. And I guess they, that means they're sweat resistant as well, which obviously is like the main point here. Let's get these paired to my phone and let's see how this goes. So if these are brand new out of the package when you just got them, all you're gonna do is just hold down this triangle button between the plus and the minus here for the volume up and volume down. I mean, there's only three buttons on these things. So you're just gonna turn them on. If you've already used these and you wanna pair these to a new device and get them into pairing mode, you gotta hold down that same button, but for three seconds. And then what'll happen is there's a little light that flashes here. And all you do is you take your phone, all right, go to Bluetooth settings, pair a new device, they see it and they are paired to it. It's as fast as that. These are pretty good. I have to say that that's really fast when it comes to pairing. Now you can also pair them to a second device as well. Uh, I did find that a little cumbersome. You do have to turn the Bluetooth off. Like let's say for example, I was about to do that right now. I'd have to turn off the Bluetooth on my phone, put these in pairing mode, go to the next device. A lot of times I, you know, I watch TV with headphones on just because it sounds so much better than the TV speakers or even just, you know, unless you can afford a, a thousand, a couple thousand dollar surround sound system, the headphones do sound better. So let's say I was to pair these with my Roku soundbar. I would have to, like I mentioned, I have to turn the Bluetooth off of here, put these in pairing mode, connect them to the television and I'm off to the races with that. Then I turn the Bluetooth back on on my phone here and you'll be good to go. So it does work. It's just cumbersome to set up. Let's test these out. I'm going to go to my test tracks on Spotify. And. Okay, I've got my audio turned up about 50%, which is what I normally have it at. And I'm not hearing much. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to maybe 75%. Okay. All right, that sounds pretty good. Now, let me pause this real quick here. One thing I want to mention is that Soundpeats says that they use a bass boost algorithm to increase the bass on these things. And this one thing I'm really curious to see if it's going to help. So let's just go back to playing it. I haven't hit the part of the song. Oh, there we go. There's the bass. It's not bad. Wow. You know, you, you have to sort of measure this or grade this on a scale. Like I would never compare these to any over ear headphones or any um, earbuds. But in terms of comparing these to other open ear headphones, like bone conduction ones, especially this sounds way better, but that's expected, isn't it? There's more bass than I expected. Let's there's an app for these. Let's give that a shot and let's see how that works. Because that might sound even better. Go to the Soundpeats app. It's searching for the device. All right, so it found the Soundpeats run free. It shows the battery level too. It's right at 92% right now. All right, let's go to the settings here. And okay, there's an adaptive EQ, which you can do a sound test. This is very similar to Soundcore's um, adaptive noise cancellation test. Uh, instead of obviously, instead of noise cancellation, in this case, it's for the EQ. However, you could do a custom equalizer. Let's do this. All right, All right we're going to turn the bass up higher. It, it gets kind of muddy, muddy. Yeah. All right, let's increase everything. I'm really not noticing a difference. Yeah, the highs don't need to be as high. Oh, that's pretty good. It's still treble heavy. I'm turn it down some more. That's not bad. It's a really weird curve. I don't. I've never seen a headphones where I'd have to do a curve like this to adjust the EQ, but. All right, I think that's enough of a test. All right, let's get into this. So let's do the one thing I always forget about in these videos and test the mic. I don't know why I forget, I'm sorry. But as you can probably tell, I'm using the microphone on this thing right now to record my audio. And what better time than for a dad joke? So for those of you old enough, let me ask you a question. How do you get a waterbed more bouncy? You fill it with spring water. Sorry. What would I compare these to? These remind me of the old Koss 
headphones that go around the back of your neck and uh, uh, like these it's like they're a combination of that and these old sony walkman sport headphones there these are the precursors to earbuds essentially and if you're old like me you'll know what i'm talking about if you're a lot younger than me and you never heard of these here's your history lesson for the day there's really nothing special to me about these they certainly look good don't get me wrong they definitely look good um they're very comfortable i would compare the build quality to something that i've seen with the shocks brand i'm very impressed by that i would imagine these would last i don't see these having an issue so these would probably make a good pair of gym headphones running um probably shorter distance i would say not longer distance because i expect there would be some rubbing on the neck band in the back of you um good use cases though i mean like if you're gonna go take your dog for a walk like i do these are good these are really good um you can wear these for long extended periods of time i don't know of any other pair of headphones or earbuds that i've ever tried that i could wear as comfortably or as long as these here so that's great the sound quality is not ideal. If you're just listening to podcasts or other vocal focused things, audiobooks, what have you, it's not going to be bad. It's fine, right? If you're looking for a great audio experience while wearing these, it's just not going to happen. You know, like I said, I'm grading these on a scale. I would say that the sound quality for these in general, these open ear concept headphones, and I'm bulking um, bone conductions in with that. I'm grouping bone conduction in with that. I would give these about a six or a seven out of 10 on that scale. However, in general, right? If I'm talking about um, the worst quality earbuds, headphones, whatever ever made is a one and you know, Bose, Sony level headphones are a 10. In the grand scale of audio devices, I would give these probably like a five. You know, I wouldn't really even want to use them on a commute. I would much rather have on a pair of over the ear active noise cancellation headphones and turn them on transparency mode. But if you're just doing something like outdoors, going for a walk, hike, whatever, these are pretty good for that. I would never recommend these for a daily use. No, they're not even that good for watching movies. Like I told you, I like to watch movies. These are not good for that. They sounded okay, but you really have to keep your hands on your ears to create that isolation to get really good audio out of them. I think Soundpeats definitely spent a lot of time engineering the hell out of the audio on these things, and they got about as good as you're probably going to get out of open ear air conduction headphones. If you prefer bone conduction, you should really check this video out here because in my opinion, these are the best for the money, the best bone conduction headphones that you can buy. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about shocks that you're going to have to spend like almost 200 bucks on. I'm talking about value, 50 bucks, whatever. Um, you're going to get good value for your money if you prefer bone conduction. Thanks. Peace.